Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Nessus Vulnerability Scanner. My name is Jasmine, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid cybersecurity, ethical hacking, or cloud pro. This beginner-friendly tutorial will equip you with the knowledge to download, install, and utilize Nessus like a pro. We'll delve into understanding reports and teach you how to patch those security holes before they cause havoc. Additionally, this guide provides solutions to common errors you might encounter during installation or use. So grab your drink and let's collaborate to secure your digital world. Nessus, your network security detective. This vulnerability scanner acts like a watchful eye, identifying weaknesses in your computer systems or network. It meticulously examines software, configurations, and settings, searching for known vulnerabilities like a skilled investigator. If it detects any weak spots, Nessus flags them as security risks, categorizing them based on severity, critical, medium, etc. Comprehensive reporting and tracking. Upon completing a scan, Nessus generates a detailed report, listing all identified vulnerabilities alongside solutions and explanations for each. It also maintains a historical record for specific systems or networks, allowing you to track vulnerability trends over time, whether they're increasing or decreasing after implementing recommended fixes. Ready to put Nessus to the test? Let's embark on a journey where we'll scan a virtual system, introduce controlled vulnerabilities, and learn how to remediate them using the insights provided by Nessus. Hypervisors are software programs that allow you to create and manage multiple virtual machines, VMs, on a single physical machine. This opens up a world of possibilities, enabling you to run various operating systems simultaneously on your computer. While several hypervisors exist, two popular options include VMware Workstation. This widely used option is available for both Windows and Linux. You can download the setup file directly from the official VMware website. Remember to choose the appropriate version for your operating system and store the downloaded file in a convenient location on your computer. VirtualBox. This free and open source alternative offers similar functionality. Download the software from the official VirtualBox website and follow the installation instructions. Remember, this tutorial will be focusing on using VMware Workstation. If you choose VirtualBox, the installation process might differ slightly, but the overall concepts remain similar. The ISO file is a digital archive containing the entire installation data for a specific Windows operating system. Its purpose is to facilitate installation of the OS on a computer, either through physical media like a DVD or downloaded from the internet. In our case, this ISO file helps in setting up a virtual machine for Windows using the VMware hypervisor. To download ISO files for Windows, search for the Windows 10 ISO and select the first link that is provided by Microsoft from the generated result. This link opens a download page for Windows 10. Scroll down the page and hit the Download Now button to install the Windows installer setup. Open this installer, accept the agreements, select the installation media option, set the language or leave it as recommended, and choose the ISO file as our media. After that, the location to store the ISO file is asked by the wizard, and the Windows 10 file downloading gets started. Once the downloading ends, the wizard dialog box gets canceled automatically. Let's set up Windows 10 virtually using the already installed VMware hypervisor. Let's proceed by opening the VMware and hitting the create a new virtual machine option to initiate the creation wizard. Here, choose the recommended option. Select the image file options, provide the path of the downloaded ISO file, allocate the space, and customize the hardware that is going to be allotted to the created Windows machine. You can either set your configuration like specifying RAM processors, etc., or go with the recommended options. Now hit the Finish button to start the creation of the virtual machine. After that, the new virtual machine of Windows 10 gets opened automatically, and it asks multiple questions like setting language, product key, and operating system type like Pro, Education, etc. After that, Select the drive where you want to store the files of virtual machines. Once all questions are answered, then select the Install Now button. After that, the installation process will be started, which will take some time. So, we'll meet once the installation is completed. Search for the Nessus Essentials over Chrome or any other browser and open the first link which is provided by the Tenable website. Once the web page gets opened, provide the value for the name and email fields. 
After that, hit the Get Started button which sends an activation email to your provided mail and asks you to verify yourself. Once the verification is done and the activation code is provided via email, the Download Now option will display it on the same website. By clicking this button, you'll redirect it toward the Nessus Essentials download page from there. Download the Tenable Nessus software installer. Now, open the installer and walk through the wizard while providing the required information like setting up the path and accepting the agreement. In the end, the installation process for Nessus gets started and will meet at the end of this installation procedure. After the installation, the Nessus page on localhost opens automatically. There register yourself as an online user by unchecking the register offline checkbox. After that, register yourself for essentials and enter the verification you received in the mail while creating an account at the start. Now, the Nessus package installation gets started after entering the Nessus account credentials. After the package installation, the home page of your Nessus essentials appears like this, along with the virtually created Windows 10 OS. Performing first scan without credentials. As we have already set our virtual environment and Nessus, so let's perform our first scan to find the vulnerabilities residing in the virtual Windows 10 OS. Let's start by retrieving the IP address of the virtual machine by executing the ipconfig command on the console. Now open the terminal from the host OS and utilize the ping command over the retrieved virtual machine OS IP address to check network connectivity by sending an ICMP echo request and expecting a reply. As the connectivity for another system is blocked by default by Windows Defender and other services, it leads to a request timed out error. To resolve it, disable the Windows Defender firewall of Virtual Windows OS by traversing to the Defender Advanced settings. Once done, hit the Apply and OK buttons to apply and save the changes. Now, again, utilize the ping command and you'll see that ICMP packets are sent and received without any packet loss. Now traverse to the Nessus dashboard and create a new scan of type Basic Network Scan. A template for the select scan will be opened. Here provide the random name for scan and set the virtual machine IP address as a value for the target's input field. You can also provide credentials and set the specific plugins as per requirements. Right now, we are sticking to Basic and not adding credentials. Also, save the changes and run the scan by hitting the Play button. You can also see the progress of your scan and identified vulnerabilities by double-clicking your scan. After completing a scan, you can see that 17 vulnerabilities are identified, and the user can also see the history of the scan performed over the single IP address by opening the History tab. Setting up the virtual OS to allow credential scan. As we have seen, the scan without providing credentials identifies very less vulnerabilities, because for deep scan, the providence of credentials is required. To perform this scan, several configuration needs to be done at the virtual or targeted machine. Start by opening the Services application using the search bar and set the status of Automatic for the Remote Registry service. Then, open the Advanced Sharing settings and turn in the File and Printer Sharing option. Also, open the User Account Control settings and set it to Never Notify whenever changes happen in the system. After that, hit the OK button and allow the changes. Lastly, search and open the Registry Editor Windows application and traverse into the A key underscore local underscore machine, software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, policies, and the system folder. Inside this file, create a DWORD type file named local account token filter policy and set its value date to 1. Finally, restart the Windows OS to apply all newly configured changes and after restart login into your system. Performing test with credentials. After performing the illustrated operations in your targeted virtual machine OS, open the Nessus dashboard in the host operating system. Here, configure the already created scan and open the Windows settings from the Credentials tab. Here, provide the username of your virtual machine OS, which can be found by executing the WOMI command from the virtual OS terminal, and provide the password, leave or change the other options as per requirements. Lastly, Save the changes and run the scan by clicking the play button. After the scan completion, you can see that now the results are changed and more system vulnerabilities are retrieved. The result is displayed in both the list and pie graph format, along with the scan details like starting or ending time. By moving into the vulnerabilities tab, you'll see the description, solutions, and more information about each vulnerability. In the remediations tab, the solution is offered that can resolve most of the critical and high vulnerabilities from the system. 
In the History tab, now you'll see two scan details as two scans are performed on the same targeted machine. Let's introduce some vulnerabilities by installing an older version of an application within the virtual machine's operating system. We'll use Opera for testing purposes. Search for Old Opera in your web browser and download an older version from a reputable source, for example, the second or first search result. Once downloaded, follow the installation wizard and complete the basic configuration. Now, switch back to the Nessus dashboard on the host operating system and click the play or start button to initiate a scan. After completion, you'll see several vulnerabilities identified, primarily due to the outdated browser and potentially unapplied Windows updates. The Remediations tab will suggest solutions to mitigate these vulnerabilities, including removing Opera. Additionally, your scan history will now reflect three completed scans. Now let's resolve most of these vulnerabilities to get our scan result better. Start by opening the control panel, select the option of uninstalling software, and uninstall the Opera browser. Next, search for Windows Update Settings and update the Windows by hitting the Restart button. After restarting the system check for any pending updates and move towards the Nessus dashboard to rescan the system. After rescan, you'll see that almost all critical vulnerabilities are now resolved. For comparison, open the History tab and you'll see the results of all performed scans. This tutorial has explored the power of the Nessus Vulnerability Scanner. We began with a simple scan, revealing limited vulnerabilities. By providing credentials and adjusting settings, subsequent scans identified deeper issues. We even tested Nessus's detection capabilities by introducing vulnerabilities and witnessing their critical classification. Finally, removing these vulnerabilities and re-scanning confirmed Nessus's ability to track resolved issues. This demonstrates the importance of a comprehensive scanning approach for effective vulnerability management. Congrats! You have successfully learned how to identify and mitigate system vulnerabilities using the Nessus Vulnerability Scanner. I hope this Nessus tutorial was helpful. For further learning, explore the official Nessus documentation. If you have any questions or encounter issues, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll do my best to assist you. Check out the video on the right for more content to help you develop your IT career.